This is Twit. What, what to you, from what you will see when you look out there, is the current state of science and, uh, dare I use the word, educational programming? And how does it compare to years past and where is it going? Because it's tough to keep an audience anymore. You know, as to where it's, we'll start at the end, as to where it's going, I think that's a tough one to predict because I remember when Amazon, you know, first started selling books, people were like, oh, no one's going to read anymore. All the bookstores are closing. And yeah, the brick and mortar places are closing, but reading is like still as popular as ever. So I think, you know, a lot of times we we think, oh, this medium is dying. You know, no one's watching linear TV anymore. No one's doing science content. And that's sort of true. But I also think it's just changing forms. And one of the things personally, I think that we need to do as people who make longer form content, uh, we need to stick to the strengths of what that content can be and can do. And to me, that's storytelling, right? There's a really good, you know, there are really good science people on TikTok, right? They're doing interesting mm-hmm. stuff. There's also really bad stuff, but there's good stuff too. Same thing with YouTube, you know, Vsauce or Chris Gazag or you know, any of these more sort of smaller, shorter form content places. Uh, those are all great, but they don't lean into what has always been long form strength, which is storytelling. And one challenge I think that a lot of these streamers and linear TV networks face today is trying to is getting caught in trying to produce stuff that they're not good at. Right? It's, oh, we have to make this new show for these new people, this new audience, this younger audience. You know, it has to be more like YouTube. Mm. It has to be more like TikTok. Right. No. Right. right. Don't do what you're bad at, right? Michael Jordan shouldn't have gone to play baseball. Right? <laughs> he, was, he was good at basketball. In fact, he was really good at basketball. He should have just stuck with it and he learned his lesson. And I think, I think TV can do that too. And to get to your point about the broader landscape, you know, Curiosity Stream is really the only place where you're getting, like that's the type of content, documentary, educational content that lives there. You see some stuff on Netflix, you know, and on Apple TV and every streamer sort of has its prestige blue chip nature series. But that's, I think, the majority of the science content you get on places like that are the Our Planets and the, you know, One Strange Rock and all these kind of nature series because they're about Earth. You can show cute animals. You can show pretty pictures of vistas. And with space content, it's really hard because... You can't anthropomorphize a galaxy, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have a mama bear and a, and a baby bear that it can shepherd them. <laughs> so it's a long winded way of saying, I think the content will continue to be made and not disappear, but the form, you know, is, is sort of TBD. Well, and that, and that's an interesting observation. You were talking about books and, you know, we sort of, for us wayward under earning authors who've got a bunch of them sitting out there slowly rolling onto the, the back order shelf. Um, we rolled into the pandemic thinking, you know, this is horrible, but maybe people will start reading again. And I had four books released in 2019 with great hopes. A couple of them did. Okay. A couple did less, less spectacularly. And then, you know, we were all kind of waiting with bated breath and there was sort of this, this ghost of a spike at the beginning of the pandemic. And then it sort of flattened out. Ebooks did take a little bit of a spike, physical books, not so much, but they're really in trouble now. So you go back to publishers today and they're just like, they're, they're tears streaming down their faces. We can't move books except for that handful of A-list, but A-list authors out there. So traditional books are kind of suffering. Um, I don't know about curiosity stream. I've I've heard things coming and going. What we do see, which is kind of a weird outlier for me, and this isn't really related to what I'm saying, but I don't know if you've ever seen any of Isaac Arthur's stuff. He has a a channel on YouTube called Futurism, Science and Futurism with Isaac Arthur. And he's a, a friend of the show and the president of the National Space Society as well. He does these hour long things on like Dyson spheres or warp speed travel or crazy aliens that dress funny and it's him talking with an hour of of cut and cover you know pretty pictures but it's 45 minutes to an hour and he gets between half a million and a million views and it's a real head scratcher to me because i've done stuff that's six and seven minutes for the organization that they're trying to get you know a thousand views 
So it's it's bizarre, you know. It, it, you, you're talking about the information still sells, but it goes into various different venues. But that one was a shocker to me because I had been told as an older guy, you know, everybody is saying, no, it's got to be three minutes or less or six minutes or less. Here comes this guy slowly talking through an hour and people seem to love it. And it must drive the networks nuts trying to figure out what's next. Yeah, it's it's weird how those those things catch fire. You know, it's the same was true with any sort of product or, you know, food or trend, you know, mm -hmm. like the ice bucket challenge. You know, sometimes something just takes off and there's no way you can really predict it. And I think the trap that a lot of content creators fall into is trying to, they see, okay, someone did X and it was successful. I'm going to do X. So it's going to be successful. The truth is it's not right. It's never, if you try to ape something else, it's not going to do, be as good. So my philosophy is when I can do what I'm passionate about and try to convey that passion and make it interesting. If you build it, hopefully they will come, you know, if it's one viewer, a million, I don't think you can really make content trying to, to do that. You know, it's like the commercial back when viral videos were a thing, you know, everyone was like, Oh, we're going to make, we're going to make a viral video for our product. Like you don't make a viral video, right? A video becomes right, 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 right. viral, <laughs> right? Well, you this is like say, when oh, all the studios were saying, let's make the next Blair Witch cause it was a cult hit and we'll make a cult film. And you can't set out to make a cult film. It's a defiance of the whole definition, right? Yeah. I mean, if Tommy Wiseau tried to make the room on purpose, you know, then it would have not been the same, you know, sort of cult classic. It, you have to just do do something full heart and and then mm. just hope that people come to it. And it, I think back to your, to your point, Rod, about how this, you know, Isaac Arthur was his name, mm -hmm. you know, how he has so many views and, and other videos seemingly short or don't. I think it's just how do people find this stuff? You know, it's so hard. I have a hard time with all the streaming services and all the stuff online. Like, I don't even know how to find content. You know, there's no TV guide for the 10 different streaming services. And I'm amazed you even remember TV guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we used to have the paper copy. Paper. We We're kind of getting to the point where the age of the gatekeeper seems to be diminishing in media. So when I was a kid for news, it was people like Walter Cronkite and Frank Reynolds, you know, or the big network news stars. When you guys were coming up, it was probably other people. Um, sorry, I'm getting pinged here. Um, but and, and in book publishing, it was, you know, the editors or, the, or the, the publisher themselves. And with the emergence of uh, what, what would we call it mass created media, I guess, you know, you no longer have to be a media company to make media. Obviously, you can just be a person. They may or may not be a resp particularly responsible gatekeeper, which is something that's creating a problem. Also, algorithms that select material that's going to feed you what you already want. You know, if you're looking for entertainment, that's great. If you're looking for news and facts, it's not so great. So I'm kind of casting a wide net here, but do you have any thoughts on the whole idea of the gatekeeper? Because you kind of are one and you may be one of the last ones. Or is it self-selecting that people will seek them out? I don't know if I really am a gatekeeper, to be honest. I think I'm, I'm still the one trying to storm the castle. <laughs> and I, I think a gate is only as good as its guards. You know, and, and a lot of the gates that we have in traditional media, the guards aren't always so good. You know, it's a tough, it's, it's, it's easy. Okay. It's not easy to green light a nature doc, but it's easy in the sense of that you sort of know what you're going to get. You're going to get beautiful pictures, you know, see, stories that, of animals that you can tell and anthropomorphize and people are going to like it with science content and engineering content. And it's, it's hard to visualize what you're going to get. And it requires a bit of understanding of certain things about how the world works and how the universe works to even understand what you're being given. You know, I've, before, I've been given a note before uh, on a show that asked me what the difference between a sun, a planet and a moon was. And really part, part of me was wow. like, you know, a, wow, you know, I got to step back and try not to like, just jump out the window. But, <laughs> you know, um, but it, it's, it makes you realize that 
before it even gets to an audience, it's got to get through a lot of layers of management and people, you know, executives and, and approvers and gatekeepers, like you were saying. Um, so I'm all for the gatekeepers getting younger. Um, it's not to diminish the people who are doing their jobs well, but it's a space where space is hard to, hard to understand. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, I don't think we should have no gatekeepers at all, right? It should just be a free for all because then, I, I mean, an algorithm is basically a free for all, right? Let's, let's get real. It's not yeah, doing anything it's not smart, much of a gatekeeper. right? It's, it's designed to make you click and make you angry and just, keep your eyes hyper-focused on your little screen, right? There's nothing like how are we going to provide the best content or the most, most truth content. Um, so I think that's reflexively gone in the wrong direction. There needs to be some, some curation, but as to who is doing it and where, I think there's a, an opportunity to maybe find, find some new avenues, um, you know, to get people like, people who do understand the space and the science space uh, to try to reach an audience. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>